Niger and then inside. The federal government says it has initiated diplomatic talks with the United Kingdom and the United Arab Emirates. Journalist Fisher Yor Shoombo, released after being detained at the force headquarters following a story exposing corruption in the police. And like always, we will be reviewing the dailies with an analyst to review them with us. Many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Tuesday morning. And as always, we will be starting with stories uh, that are trending and uh, stories that are just making uh, discussions across the various uh, platforms and various circles. And uh, the very first one we'll be analyzing right now is uh, Fisaya Shoyombo, a journalist uh, who was uh, detained yesterday and eventually released uh, after some time for his uh, publication on uh, alleged corruption in the Nigerian police force. But so this is just uh, one uh, case uh, too many. It is not the first time that uh, we've um, seen, heard, and uh, or even have witnessed uh, issues of um, journalist um, intimidation by the Nigerian police. Sometimes, uh, or most times, when journalists release uh, publications that are not favorable to the Nigerian police force, they are mostly either detained, beaten, or sometimes harassed as well. Well, um According to, you know, the tweet that he put out, uh, Fisiayo Shorombo, uh, he talked about the fact that he was invited. According to the invitation that he got, uh, they found some elements, I mean, phone numbers. His contact was uh, put out amongst those that should be invited or investigated, and so he showed up. Now, it's okay to be invited by security agents or agency. Uh, anyone can be invited. Anyone at all can be invited, and that's all right. But it's just the pattern. And because this is a journalist and because of the story, I mean, it's all right for everyone to, you know, come up with um, the theory to say, oh, this is also another, uh, you know, intimidation. This is also another form of, you know, the uh, might, the federal might uh, showing itself and flexing muscles at this point in time. So, yes, but let's also talk about the issue of police. It's a good thing that he's been released. And uh, we have several reports over time. Nigeria at the time ranked 120 on World Press. Uh, talking about World Press Freedom Index, we ranked 120 compared to, that is at, that is at uh, 2020, if I'm not mistaken, or, uh, you know, 2021. Now, that's uh, if you compare that to uh, the previous report, we ranked 115 out of 118 countries. It doesn't really tell good for us as a country. Right. Uh, because for democracy, you would have to talk about uh, a free press, a free media. It is very, very apt. And the issue of freedom of speech or freedom of uh, however you want to put it is a fundamental human right across is a universal human concern or right, if you want to put it. So as journalists, they are also expressing the fundamental or universal human right across Right. So it's nothing very special. It's not like it's just limited to anyone. And if we wanted to even talk about the issue of fake news, the issue of libel and what have you, well, we have laws. There are laws that can take care of all of that. And that's why a lot of quotas were really concerned, you know, at the time uh, where, you know, the federal government had plans of trying to regulate, you know, the social media. And if you're saying, oh, there's fake news, there's issue of libel and what have you, there's a law that actually you know, takes care of all of that, cyberbullying, what have you, crime and criminality. But the issue with us over, over the years and over time is the fact that we have too many laws without enforcement. So, but you also want to agree with me that there's so much intimidation, there's so much harassment, uh, there's so much arrest, and what have you with journalists, they face that. Now, there's a report according to, um, there's a report that was made available according to, you know, Article 19, Article 19 made that report sometime talking about, you know, the number of journalists that's been, uh, you know, intimidated, harassed and detained. So you want to also agree with me that uh, the number, the figure keeps increasing from 2019. At the time you had 19 journalists that have been attacked and detained. And then in 2020, we're looking at the case of 51. And according to those reports, the government, 
is really responsible and behind a lot of some of these attacks that you know the people have been faced so uh, this is just one out of so many cases you know that journalists are really facing in nigeria and to begin to report some of these stories really really very crucial i mean if you are a journalist you want to report the issue of um, you know police brutality uh, corruption on politicians human rights abuses and what have you it is so so difficult you know to practice in nigeria Right, uh, we just um, actually are glad that uh, Fishai uh, has actually been released uh, because uh, we as journalists, uh, we understand that, you know, what all of this is all about because as journalists, uh, we bend over backwards uh, to expose uh, various truth because we are actually, you know, uh, the ones uh, people look up to, you know, uh, to you know, to tackle the government, to tackle issues of um, accountability, and then when this, uh, or we are not allowed to do our jobs, uh, it is really very unbecoming. I will move away from Fisaya Shoyombo. Another story that is uh, uh, making headlines right now uh, is uh, you know, controversial uh, journalist that uh, came a little lawyer. Uh, uh, senior advocate of Nigeria, Femme Falano, has actually um, asked uh, the Nigeria police uh, to invite her, uh, you know, Olun lawyer over her, well, quote, uh, reckless uh, comment concerning uh, the deaths of uh, Sylvester Rumoni. You know, remember the story of um, Down College, uh, the, the student who was uh, actually bullied. So it is uh, actually trending. As much as, you know, one would also expect that, you know, at this point in time, uh, we should be able to be human. Okay, as long as everyone has a right and has an opinion, because that's what it is. Everyone has a right to an opinion and all of that. But you also, we also need to understand that we come to the fact that we're still human beings. And so if you come from that particular angle, we probably might just, you know, be very careful and cautious. First of all, you need to understand that, you know, the family is grieving. There's a loss. A human life has been lost. And that's why, secondly, you also need to understand, because... Uh, it brings us back, you know, to the fact that at some point government want to say we need to begin to regulate, we need to begin to control what people information that people put out because it could it can be very very dangerous and it can cause you know a lot of mayhem in society and the country and you know you can go i have seen a lot of emotions everywhere i mean a lot of persons are reacting very angry really really very angry but like i always say let's not forget that we're human beings and in all of our endeavors whether you are a journalist or you are a police officer you are a governor you're a president whatever it is that you are you need to always get back to the fact that you are a human being True. And you, if you understand the fact that you're a human being, there would be issue of empathy. I, I really do not know how to put it. Well, it's, it's not a license. I, I don't know if you, you're getting my point. Yeah, so we, 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 we also need to, you know, you, you put up, yes, first you're a human being before you're a journalist or you're a president or whatever it is that True. you are. And so I think that we, we should not let whatever it is that we do, our profession, override us. We should be guided by the fact that we're humans and, you know, act in that you know uh, oh, yeah. that particular way in that particular line and so all of the statement because one would expect that i mean making such kind of statement how would the family feel whether or not it's there's some element of truth to it or, or not the fact that you have investigations ongoing the fact that you know the lord's going to take his full his full cost and that's why we have the institution of government to take care of situations like this let's be very careful uh, the kind of comments that we make uh, I, I really don't know. That's the much that I, I can say. Because first of all, you have a family that is grieving. There's a child that is dead. And there's a lot around it. How factual are your facts? Where did you get all of this from? And, you know, it calls for a lot of concern. And, and this profession is a very, very sensitive one at that. And we should take it very serious and we caution. But, however, it's fine. Uh, like I always say that inviting individuals or persons for questioning by security agencies or you know security personnel it's nothing wrong it's nothing as long as they do it in accordance with the law True. yeah like you have said i couldn't agree more you know as journalists uh, we should be you know careful you know about the things we say or write uh, before we go to press we should as much as possible be able to substantiate all of our claims all of our reports so at the end of the day you know we don't lose uh, we don't lose our soul, we don't lose our credibility, and uh, you know. So, in when we come out in future to say things, uh, you know, people would actually appreciate them and uh, you know take us for our words. So, 
I, I understand that the position of um, Falano and Falano, you know, uh, you know the, the law firm, you know, wanting her to be invited, you know, over time, journalists should just be careful, you know, with whatever they say. I don't want to start talking about Oluloy and how controversial she is. That's an aside. But the, the, the underlining thing here is that uh, always be able to substantiate all your claims before uh, you go to press. All right, uh, the last uh, story uh, trending uh, across some um, social spaces is uh, uh, Pantami, that's the Minister of um, Digital um, Economy. You know, uh, well, the story is just everywhere that uh, he uh, had actually uh, flown, uh, flown out uh, his family you know, in the wake of Nigeria uh, having a row with the UAE. Uh, some Nigerians are saying that uh, where does his solidarity lie when uh, people are talking of boycotting uh, flights uh, you know, to UAE and the Nigerians being stranded here because of travel bans and everything he, you know, flew his family out, you know, through the same You know, airport. following all of this uh, controversy with uh, the airlines, the fact that Nigeria is on the red list with yeah. some countries and the restriction, uh, you know, not to airlift some Nigeria from a particular location to another one. Some persons are saying that, you know, really this is actually a concern of the elites. You know, the poor, that's, I mean, the masses, they would say this is a concern of uh, um, some specific in the society. It doesn't concern everybody because there are some people that cannot afford, uh, <laughs> they have no business, you know, going anywhere. They're in Nigeria. And even within Nigeria, how many of them have been able to, you know, board a flight uh, from a particular location to another location? So uh, it's more like this is a justification to say that this is morely, you know, an elite consent. Yeah. And uh, it consents all of them. But, you know, the issue of solidarity and consent is also another issue. It brings us back to the fact that the major consent, the major issue that we have as a country, or not really necessarily the major issue, but one of the problems that is really strong because it trickles down to all of the actions of government and inaction of government, is interest. When your personal interest overrides national interests, your actions will always speak for you. True. Mm. But of course, we never could tell, you know, what the emergency might be. It could be a health concern. But it also brings us back to the fact that why don't we have, uh, you know, our health system functional? It could also be educational issues. Why don't why why can't we fix our own home? Why can't we fix our country? What exactly are we looking for outside don't when we can actually it. have it inside? Well, it is what it is. All right, that's as much as we can take on Top Trending. Uh, we'll be back in a minute with Off the Press. That's a review of the front pages of various newspapers in a moment. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Do join us again.